Hello, and welcome to the pilot episode of the Detroit Sports Drag on TV. And if this show is anything like past endeavors of this website, we're probably already off the air. Oh wait, actually we are already off the air. This show was originally supposed to run on Channel 20 on Sunday mornings. A 13-week contract was signed and we were all ready to go. Then 12 days before this program was to be broadcast, WMYD pulled the plug. They claimed it was because of the content of this show, but they never even saw this show. Channel 20, Channel 7, whoever, breached the terms of our contract due to the substance of the DSR website, even though we addressed the issues of content almost a month before they abandoned their commitment. If you want any details on, on that story, go to the DSR website. I'll post all the emails. Yes, Channel 20, a station that airs Jerry Springer, Steve Wilkos, and Maury Povich paternity test, and used to broadcast a show dedicated to catching people cheating on their significant others, thought the DSR's content was too shocking? But that's neither here nor there at this point, as my attorneys will deal with the fallout of Channel 20 violating the terms of our contract. But the show will go on, as I will host it on this website, Periscope, Facebook Live, back of an envelope, anywhere, until we can make other television arrangements. Look, I know what you people are saying, why put all this effort into a TV show after all of these years in the first place? Especially when you have a face made for a podcast and you look like the end result of a cross-pollination between Fred Savage and Butch Patrick. Not only can I not argue with any of that, I've never done a real TV show before. Yes, I've screwed around in the past on local access and internet webcasts with Sean Belisian and Damon the Dog Perry, seven, but nothing this elaborate. Hell, I don't even know what camera to look at right now. And I'm pretty sure the only person at the world, in the world worse at reading off a teleprompter is our current president, as I just proved. So why am I doing this? Because there's a dearth of critical analysis on television regarding the four Detroit professional sports teams. And we are currently embroiled in the worst era we've seen collectively of the Wings, Pistons, Tigers, and Lions, at least since the late 70s. So why have I spent one third of my life chronicling the Detroit sports media's dereliction of duty? You want answers? You want the truth? Look, we live in a city that has major sports teams, and those organizations have to be covered by men armed with the truth. Now, which journalists actually do that? You, Brad Galley? You, Anthony Fennick? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? Of course not. I have a greater responsibility than any of these journalistic cheerleaders can possibly fathom. They weep for their brethren, I knew and they curse the DSR. They have that luxury. And my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to them, exposes hidden stories. They don't want to admit that truth because deep down in places they don't talk about while waiting on the Comerica Park press box buffet line, they want me on this beat. They need me on this beat. We at the DSR use words like eunuch, derelict, propagandist. We use these words as the backbone of a life spent fighting for higher standards. Many of you media morons use them as a punchline. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to radio personalities who rely on my articles and tweets for the insight and commentary they provide and then question the manner in which I provide it. I would rather they just said thank you and went on their way. So did I have sour shoes from the Howard Stern Show prank Anthony Fennick, Lynn Henning, and Terry Foster? Did my website nail Drew Sharp for plagiarism and lying to his superiors at the Free Press? And did that investigation potentially contribute to his death? Did I embarrass Scott Anderson with a sex doll named Kinky Kim? You're goddamn right I did. It's a Detroit sports website. Uh, I don't say it. This, 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 this puke isn't even worth being mentioned. I had a few too many, and then just drove home, and then just fucking, yeah. Is it true you sexually harassed a co-worker uh, oh, man. in a college newspaper? It was condescending maggots. You guys got some cult going there. You guys are making everybody angry and getting them mad and doing stuff, so you're, you're creating quite a stir back there in Detroit. The only time we should mention him is for his obituary. Except okay. no one will care when he's dead. The largest personal injury accident award in Michigan you may not know who won it. But here's who helped get it, Goodman Acker. We listened. We fought, and we won. 
a record $15.3 million cash settlement. That's winning big. That's Goodman Acker. Now what can we win big for you? Goodman Acker, good decision. Call 1-800-TRUSTED. Here's to the tradesmen, the service techs, the installers, the HVAC guys and women, the ones that work with their hands and take pride in keeping the rest of us comfortable. They succeed with hard work and don't have much respect for those that don't. They embody the grit of their city while quietly enjoying the American dream. Here's to the drink after work tasting even better because they know it was earned. The DSR on TV is brought to you by the great Detroit sports fans at CaliTickets.com. You can call Cali Tickets at 877-225-8425 for tickets to the Lions at Ford Field and the Wings and Pistons at the brand new Little Caesars Arena. If you mention the DSR, you will get a 10% discount on your order. Not only does CaliTickets.com not have any hidden fees like those major apps on your phone, you will also get 10% off their low prices by being a fan of this show. The folks at CaliTickets.com are also your place for upcoming concerts from artists like Jay-Z, Lady Gaga, Bob Seger, Guns N' Roses, and Paul McCartney. Not to mention great seats for upcoming WWE and UFC brawls. CaliTickets.com, 877-225-8425. And don't forget to mention the DSR for that 10% duck it discount. So if not Jif missed, then who? Do you actually think you're going to hear any biting commentary on Fox Sports Detroit? That station's on-air personalities are co-conspirators with the teams they cover. I mean, they are practically in bed together. Or how about the WDIV Sports Final Solution on Sunday evenings? I'm sure you're going to receive really aggressive commentary from Jamie Edmonds. Or how about Fox 2 Sportsworks anchored by Dan Miller? I love Dapper, but you got a better chance of Pat Caputo making a salient, coherent point on that show than Miller ever, ever criticizing the Lions. And who can blame Miller, since the last radio play-by-play -play man for the team, Mark Champion, got fired by the organization for saying phrases like, man oh man, and holy mackerel, when things went poorly for the Lions. Because who wouldn't have been beaten down by the franchise during the Matt Millen era? Or how about Miller's horrible guess? Bob Wojanowski retired in 2002, and yet he still shows up for his Sunday appearances, seemingly forgetting that his services are no longer needed. To spew hot takes like this, quote, Oh, Vin, don't fall for it. Kevin Durant will never win an NBA title. Dominique 2.0, unquote. Or how about this one? Quote, Kevin Durant is a fake superstar. Good player, not as good as advertised. Felt this before his 7 for 33 abomination tonight, unquote. Wojanowski's hatred for Durant over the years is a real head-scratcher. I'd suggest KD maybe stole Wojo's woman, but, well... Seriously, when you're the dopiest one in a conversation with Vincent Goodshill, you might want to rethink the decisions that, you've reached to, that made you reach that point. And how about Wojo's pal and fellow panelist, Jamie Samuelson? Well, I have some dynamic video of that personality to share with you right now. And it's not like my newfound Sunday competition is the only issue in the Detroit sports landscape. Far from it. The print media is an abomination that makes those frivolous shows look like the Tim Russert era of Meet the Press. Where do I even begin with the garbage content in our major dailies? Well, I guess the Unix covering the Tigers would be a good launching point. Let's start with the Detroit News propagandist, Chris McCoskey. This isn't happening. Everyone look away, please. Nothing to see here. This sycophantic beat writer has covered all four Detroit sports teams during his pathetic tenure at the paper, and the one constant has been his desperate appeal to authority. His defenses of team management have always been pathetic, but his ridiculous torch carrying for Brad Ausmus has reached new heights. Just take a look at some of Barb Brady's comments over the last couple of years. Quote, El Avila's first decision as GM is a brilliant one. Ausmus will return for 2016. Or how about this headline? Ausmus is the least of the Tigers' problems. Just a few weeks ago, this ignoramus gave Ausmus a B grade. A B grade at the All-Star break. For this year, a B. 
in a season in which the Tigers had to get out of the gate quickly to avoid the sell-off that eventually occurred. In this season, Osmus has once again showed no urgency whatsoever. Zero. From maneuvers like keeping K-Rod in his closer position to batting Victor Martinez cleanup. To quote McCoskey from that article, quote, Osmus has got big shoulders and thick skin, unquote. A baseball manager's greatest on-field impact comes during spring training, unquote. Spring training? Once the season starts, his impacts on games is minimal. And finally, my personal favorite from last year, Osmus was brilliant in all aspects of managing this season. Are you freaking kidding me? Is this human waste watching the same team as the rest of us? The Tigers manager's own agent wouldn't they have the chutzpah to make these sort of comments. Yet the person the news entrusts to cover our baseball team constantly, constantly runs a public relations campaign for the manager he follows around like a good lap dog. McCoskey's undying need for the acceptance from the Tigers manager led to his co-workers, his co-workers at the Detroit News calling him out for his behavior, including the paper's well-respected crime reporter, George Hunter. This from McCoskey, quote, love being trolled by someone from my own paper, unquote. And this was Hunter's response, quote, maybe if he wasn't a Brad apologist, unquote. Maybe if he wasn't a Brad apologist, this coming from his co-worker who he then blocked blocked on Twitter, a guy he worked in the same building with. This lunatic is so deranged that he almost overshadows his fellow news write, writer that covers the Tigers, Lynn Henning. This is only a 30-minute program, so I can't get into all of that particular nut job's hilariously awful takes over the years, but we are talking about a dope who once said the Tigers were five to ten years away from contending in the American League Central. This occurred in 2005. Less than a year later, the team was playing in the freaking World Series. Henning actually suggested the Tigers wouldn't be able to compete in the AL Central until 2015. The team won four divisional titles before that year. And Henning's greatest hit was a tweet from 2014. Quote, keep thinking Jabba Chamberlain will cash in for four years, 40 to 50 million. I'd bet the over on his deal, way over. That was July of 2014. I'd bet the over on 50 million? Way over? That's something he actually wrote. And what actually occurred? Chamberlain signed a one-year contract with the Tigers in 2015 for one million dollars. The following season, he inked another one million dollar contract with the Indians. And this season, Jamba Chamberlain was, rele was released by something called the Colorado Springs Sky Sox in March. And now, here's a video of Henning's response to overestimating Chamberlain's potential value by the gross national product of Ghana. Oh, yes, I remember now. Missed it by that much. <laughs> In the coming weeks, I'm going to familiarize you with the despicable work of folks like Anthony Fennick, Helene Scarf James, Ansar Khan, Vince Ellis, and others in the print media. But I do want to touch on the alleged sports radio station in Detroit before heading to the break. And nobody, nobody personifies the awfulness of 97.1, the ticket, better than Scott Anderson, or as I like to call him, the virginal manatee. This uneducated, simpleton, fanboy dolt is deserving of his own Sports Center 30 for 30. But for today, I will focus on one audio clip of Anderson from his program last year. I'd say that audio is a microcosm of Anderson, but there's absolutely nothing nothing micro about him but i would make every effort possible sending a, a package of players draft picks and cash to try to get Connor mcdavid i know it's impossible no they, they, like it. pittsburgh where they wouldn't trade Cindy crosby i understand that but edmonton has been so bad for so long they keep getting these top draft picks and they haven't done anything with them and i, I i'd at least have a conversation about it and if that means you have to give up Dylan Larkin, you know, Gus Nyquist, Marchenko, a couple draft picks. Six first-round draft well, picks. Well, you know, a couple first-round picks and cash. Yeah. Dylan Larkin, Gus Nyquist, Alexei Marchenko, two first-round picks and money? For the best hockey player in the entire game? For a kid who can't even get a beer yet in America? This was actually suggested by a grown adult on a sports radio station. Keep in mind that this rocket scientist admitted on the air that he didn't know how to calculate the baseball stat WHIP when the acronym is literally the damn formula. 
At this point, you might be asking, why do I even care about the halfwits in the Detroit sports media? The reason they're enabling of the Detroit sports teams with their dis dis dissemination of misinformation to the masses dumbs down the discourse and gives Detroit sports teams impunity to continue to fail without consequence. And if you don't think there's a correlation between sports teams' accountability and the media's treatment of said organizations, you are out of your mind. This just in, the media is a pretty powerful entity that can change public perception and foster change, whether you are talking about the front page or the sports section. And if you don't want to take my word for it, ask Richard Nixon or Bob Mueller. And now, great moments in Detroit sports rag history brought to you by our good friends at Northwestern Tech Institute. We signed up for a golf tournament. On Friday afternoon, they called us and said that there was a computer glitch. They overbooked the tournament. Not that we weren't welcome here, not that we couldn't play on the other course, just that there was a, there was oversold. Hey, Mazaway, why don't you get over here and explain yourself? So they told us that we, we couldn't play because of an, it was oversold. No, no other reason. We Josh talked to him. I talked to the girl. Her name is, uh, what's her name, Josh? The girl that we talked to in marketing. Julie, yeah. Julie Hall or something, whatever. No, no, nothing that we couldn't show up here. So Josh said, we're, we were scheduled to play anyway. This is Friday at 3 o'clock. Can we play nine holes um, on the other course? Nothing to do with the, nothing to do with the uh, event. He said, fine. Signed up, showed up, paid. And now they're calling the cops on us that we can't play on a public course. We're not doing anything. We're just golfing. So what's the explanation here? The radio station does not want you present at this outing. Okay. This is a public course, correct? This is a public course, yes it okay. is. Okay, and does the radio station run this golf course or do you? No. You're Laura not. Helms, director of operations at That's this correct, point. yes. And they called the police? We're just, we're golfing. We're on the third hole golfing. We're not doing anything. Sir, we'd be happy to give you a refund. They just asked, you know, we are here to support Well, you're going to obviously give us a refund. Sure, Why are the yes. police, why are you here? Because they called us. Do you see how, the, how ridiculous this is? Yeah, we're just here because they called. We called, we got to we gotta show up. I did not call the police, so. Who called the police? I'm not sure, actually. Was it from this radio station? You know, I'm not sure. I'm actually, I, I think maybe somebody called from the radio station, because I did not call, and so I just came up to see what was going on. So I had to approve the refunds, of course, so that's right. why I'm up here. Well, who's the one? I'd like to talk to the person who called the police on us. Okay, I don't know who that is. Well, could you find out, and I'll we'll sit over here. Sure, but what's the? You it's know. a frivolous. They're, they're calling the pol two Oakland County sheriffs out here Excuses. for for a threesome golfing. You think that might be a waste of taxpayer money? Sure, but you know, sir, we'd be more than happy just to give you a refund, and then we could. Well, we are getting a refund, but. I know, but we're just wasting their time right now. I understand. And I don't want to waste your time anymore. Right. If you feel, if you can, if you want to leave, you can leave. But it's, it's, it's at, well, I don't know. That Mazway guy looked like he was going to come after me. So maybe I need him, them for my protection. The largest personal injury accident award in Michigan. You may not know who won it. But here's who helped get it. Goodman Acker. We listened. We fought. And we won a record $15.3 million cash settlement. That's winning big. That's Goodman Acker. Now what can we win big for you? Goodman Acker, good decision. Call 1-800-TRUSTED. This is Chad. Before working for Flame Furnace, Chad was working odd jobs until he was tired of making just ends meet. Chad wanted a real career. Chad went to Northwestern Tech and excelled with the hands-on training and loved the instructors. He's now on his way to becoming an installer at Flame with a great outlook on life. I'm looking to buy a house here in the next couple of years. I want a nice area for my kids. So be like Chad and go to northwesterntech.edu to learn more. Great jobs are waiting. Get trained today at Northwestern Tech, the HVAC school that works. The DSR on TV is brought to you by the great Detroit sports fans at kellytickets.com. You can call Cali Tickets at 877-225-8425 for tickets to the Lions at Ford Field and the Wings and Pistons at the brand new Little Caesars Arena. If you mention the DSR, you will get a 10% discount on your order. Not only does CaliTickets.com not have any hidden fees like those major apps on your phone, you will also get 10% off their low prices by being a fan of this show. 
The folks at KellyTickets.com are also your place for upcoming concerts from artists like Jay-Z, Lady Gaga, Bob Seger, Guns N' Roses, and Paul McCartney. Not to mention great seats for upcoming WWE and UFC brawls. KellyTickets.com, 877-225-8425. And don't forget to mention the DSR for that 10% ducket discount. Welcome back to the DSR and TV show, or as I like to call it, taped on any given Wednesday while debuting on the internet on Friday and never airing on Channel 20 because that piece of shit Mike Murray deep-sixed it. As you probably can tell, the format of this show will be similar to John Oliver's last week tonight. But in the future, I also plan on having panel discussions. Of course, after the content of this debut show, I'll probably need Helen Kushnick to book a guest, and unfortunately, she croaked in 1996. The one person that I would love, love to get on this program for an in-depth interview is 97.1 talker Mike Valente. In the 14 years he's been in this market, have you ever witnessed Valente sit down for an interview with anyone? The guy is basically a recluse at this point. Of course, there is no chance the studio gangsta will ever, ever agree to an interview with me. He's a coward who refuses to leave the cozy confines of his broadcast studio and his 14 second delay button, which might as well be his blanket. To make matters worse, he spent his entire career debating a, co- a dopey co-host punching bag in Terry Foster. And now that Foster's in forced retirement, Valente has hand-chosen a couple of imbecilic millennials to be his foil. Valente remains insulated in his Southfield broadcast studio, never venturing out of that cocoon to use his voice to question authority. Where is Valente when Al Laville or Ken Holland are giving their post-mortem press conferences at the end of another disappointing season? Where is Valente when Tom Gores and Chris Illich announce that the Pistons will be fleecing the city of Detroit to bring NBA basketball back to downtown Detroit? Where is Valente to ask the tough questions of Jim Comatose Caldwell after another Lions debacle at Ford Field? He's nowhere to be found because it would take actually actual intestinal fortitude to show your face at one of these events as opposed to bullying people behind a mic in a building where you actually need security clearance to enter. It's the same reason Valente abandoned his Twitter handle in 2014. He does not want to take part in any, any conversation that he can't totally control. It's much easier to engage in stale trolling of Michigan football fans, which he's made a career of. Seriously, name me one other media personality anywhere in their 30s that doesn't use Twitter or social media. I'll be waiting while my flaming tomahawk steak is cooked here at the Red Ox Tavern. Some of you might be unfamiliar with the DSR, and watching this show for the first time, you might be wondering, does Valente even know who I am? Oh yeah, the DSR and Valente have quite a long history. Before he entered the Detroit market, when he was still in Lansing, Ask Clown Valentine applied for a writing gig on my site, the DSR. And if you don't believe me, here's the photographic evidence. That piece was so horribly written and littered with misspelled words that I never even responded to the guy with an answer. He had the audacity to end the email with, quote, this was typed with one eye, so don't give me beep about any typos, unquote. And this guy wanted to be my latex salesman? Worse yet, the telephone tough guy has spent the last decade plus biting my takes and spewing them as his own over the XYT airwaves with absolutely no shame whatsoever. Sometimes Valente reads my articles almost verbatim without giving poor Joff Mist any credit whatsoever. So I am now extending this gracious offer to Valente. Any week you want to appear on the DSR TV program, we will preempt all other content for your appearance. The entire 30 minute show, or however how long we want to go now, mano y mano, live to tape, no editing whatsoever. Can you hear me? Just the two of us, mano y mano. I have taken off my makeup. Let's see if you can take off yours. Seriously, how long are you going to take my abuse without responding, you wimp? I know if someone was constantly calling me out, I'd have something to say. Just ask Marlo Stanfield. 
I'm Scores Man. Scores Man got a tattoo. Oops, wrong Marlo Stanfield. You call me a punk? It was bullshit, man. You ain't need that on your mind. What the fuck you know about what I need on my mind, motherfucker? My name was on the street? And when we bounce from this shit here, I'm gonna go down in them corners, let them people know. Word did not get back to me. Let them know Marlo stepped to any motherfucker, Omar, Barksdale, whoever. My name is my name. Of course, Valente, if you continue to avoid my challenges and ignore me, people might start thinking that you're chicken. <laughs>